Hello, everybody. Allie Doucette here, and we have some exciting stuff to talk about today because for the first time since 2005, the NOAA has issued a G4 severe geomagnetic storm alert for a, for a geomagnetic storm that's happening right now. Okay, I think it... Uh, had a big we had a big flare at 6:31 a.m. UTC on May 10th of 2024. That's today. Uh, so this is busy and crazy. And I found a whole bunch of really interesting resources about this. And so we're going to take a quick look at them. But a couple of things to be aware of about this is that it can these kinds of big solar storms but what's happening is there's a big storm on the sun on the face of the sun and i have an interesting thought about this astrologically as well but we'll get to that um okay we're looking at uh possible power system voltage irregularities and possibly our our electronics may do weird stuff today um spacecraft out there uh, may have orientation problems and kind of get lost in space because of what's going on with the magnetosphere. Uh, GPS systems may not function correctly. Uh, there may be intermittent high frequency radio issues and the Northern Lights may be seen as low as Alabama in the Southern United States and down to Iowa in the Midwest and Oregon in the Northwest. So it's kind of like this uh, across America, but you may be able to see the Northern Lights where you are, if even if you don't normally get to see those. Now I've posted about this on Facebook before. I don't know that I've talked about it a lot on YouTube. Being able to see the Northern Lights uh, when you're not in a space that usually sees those is exciting and cool but in my opinion it's a little disturbing because it's um when that happens it's a disturbance of the earth's magnetosphere and we need a functional magnetosphere the fact that the magnetosphere is going through so much weird damage right now to me is very alarming however it is kind of cool to see the northern lights i assume i've never seen them myself but if you have a chance to you might uh, go take a look. Now, I want to be clear that I do not believe in freaking out about all of this kind of stuff. My little 12-year-old has a little church camp out that he's going on tonight, and I feel very fine about that. I believe he will be safe. Um, but one thing that we do need to know is that when the sun is having a storm, people also have storms. And this is well documented, and that is what I really wanted to show you, um, is that I went on to PubMed and... I looked up a whole bunch of stuff about geomagnetic storms and the research that's been done on its impacts on us, and I found a whole bunch of really, really interesting things. Um, really quick, one thing that's happening here is that when the sun has a big storm, it it ends up releasing a whole lot of radiation, much more radiation than is usual. And it kind of comes out in waves from the sun and it can come out in multiple waves and they whack each other and do weird stuff. And it's just an unusual way to experience radiation from the sun. And when that unusual radiation comes to the earth, um, it messes with the earth's ionosphere, okay? Which is the upper layer, um, it's one layer of the upper atmosphere. Okay, and so what happens is when the ionosphere has these disturbances in it, um, this can mess with radio transmissions that are trying to pass through the atmosphere um, to each other, to reach satellites. Um, you know, how we've designed our technology on the Earth has really accounted for a functional ionosphere. So if the ionosphere is suddenly being like basically attacked by radiation from the sun and it's not working right, then you can you know, send information to it and it's supposed to bounce off, but if it doesn't bounce off right, then we can have some weird irregularities with electronics of all kinds. That's the, that's what's actually happening here and why it is possible that these geomagnetic storms can impact all of our technology. So when it comes to your cell phone, cell phones operate on a different radio frequency than, um, than stuff that maybe like the government is using for like uh you know military type of stuff so 
what I'm reading on the internet is that it is not likely that the storm will affect your cell phone and cell phone service. And the GPS on your phone is not true GPS in that it's not truly connecting with actual satellites that are getting disrupted. So your actual phone should be able to get you to, um, to wherever you need to go today. But, um, because we're consumers. And if you're using a consumer wireless network, then what, what you're actually using is like, you know, the cell phone towers and stuff around. And those are going to be less affected than, than the tech that's actually connecting to actual satellite positioning systems. Okay. So, um, so probably us as consumers are probably not going to be super affected. Um, severe space weather can mess with power grids. Um, okay, this is interesting. In 1989, a space weather storm led to a blackout in Quebec for more than nine hours because the geomagnetic fluctuations on the sun actually damaged the transformers and other equipment involved in their power grid. So there is some you know, historical precedent for really big stuff coming from solar storms. Um, but I personally don't think that we should freak out about this. I think it will be a better choice to, uh, to you know, focus on connecting with our creator, focus on doing the right thing every moment. Just take your deep breaths. Have a good day. I'm planning on a normal day. My son's going camping. I'm going on a date with my husband. We're going to have a good time. And I think that that is fine. But something very interesting to keep an eye on. Now, let's go look at the documented research about all of this. I'm just going to kind of zip us through PubMed. I love PubMed. It's one of my favorite uh, websites on the planet. This is the wrong one. And so is this one. Okay, this was a really interesting piece on chronoastrobiology, which is um, the discussion of chronomes, which are... They're kind of like measurements of the time cycles within the human body and within the bodies of organisms that, you know, these time-based cycles like the circadian rhythm and their connection with the stars, because it turns out that indeed human beings are magnets and we are always being influenced by the fluctuations in magnetic fields of all of the planets all of these heavenly bodies, we are being affected and our chronomes are being affected. So let's skip over here to this really interesting piece called Blood Pressure Self-Surveillance for Health. Also reflects 1.3 year Richardson solar wind variations, spinoff from chronomics. So today is my first introduction to chronomics, to be honest, and I think I found something I'm going to be digging into very soon. Um, most of this paper is basically an argument for why every person should always measure their life and like know what is going on in their own bodies, which I think is fair. They're a big advocate for self-experimentation. And so testing different supplements, then testing, you know, how it affects your body. But what they found is that when they studied a bunch of individuals that were constantly involved in self-experimentation and were keeping good records of their blood pressure and their heart rate, what they found is that um let's let's come down okay here it is the endogenicity of richardson's circa quingentidian uh which is to say 500 day 1.2 or 1.3 year rhythm okay so basically what they found here is that when people have tested their uh their heart rate and their blood pressure over time that there is a distinct longer than yearly biological rhythm that is linked to solar wind storms this richardson's um solar wind variation okay so what does that mean it means that your heart directly responds to the wind on the sun which is so amazing. I just love that people studied this and found this connection. Okay, let's move over here. Here we have some research done on additional flight delays and magnetospheric ionospheric disturbances during solar storms. This is from 2003, sorry, 2023, just about exactly a year ago. And um, 
Okay. I mean, this is a very short abstract, but what they found is that compared to quiet periods on the sun, the average delay time, arrival delay time, and 30-minute delay rate during space weather events are significantly increased by 81% and 21% respectively. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that during a solar storm, uh, 81, you're going to have an 81% increase in arrival delay of your airplane. So the planes are gonna take a longer time to get where they're going. And there's gonna be a 20% increase in delays of them taking off. Why? I found another paper where where the abstract was about um, measuring, measuring the differences in basically like cockpit measurements during solar storms. And so I didn't pull that one up, but I am guessing that if they had to study it, when solar storms are happening, it, it messes with all the instruments in the cockpit. So this is just a very, very interesting uh, kind of thing. Okay, I, I will handle it. Okay, thanks. Is it all over? Is it a big mess? It is? Okay, I'll be down in a minute. Okay, go away. Go away. I will help you. I'm sorry. My child keeps... Okay. Um, okay, further studies show that the flight delay time and delay rate will monotonically increase with the geomagnetic field fluctuations and ionospheric disturbances. Okay, oh, and here's this. The evident negative correlation between the yearly flight regularity rate and the yearly mean total sunspot number during 22 years also confirms such correlation. So what does that mean? When there's an active sunspot, all of our technology is being impacted, and what else is being impacted? Our hearts. Why is this so important? I mean, let, let's let just talk quickly about our hearts. Of course, we are fluid beings. We are made of water and our hearts are the pumper of that water. And so if your heart is having a different kind of experience because of what's going on in the sun, your entire circulatory system is gonna have a really different experience. And this is gonna impact everything. It's gonna impact the oxygenation to all of your organs, including your brain. It can impact how you think. It can impact how you feel how you feel in uh, in terms of like the physical sensations that you feel and how you feel in terms of, you know, uh, your emotions, because our emotions are so linked to what's going on in our physical bodies. So this is just incredible stuff. And if I can get back there, that which brings me over to this little guy from 2018, Moon Sun Suicide, where they found that... Um, among women aged 20 to 49 years, a significant increase in the risk of suicide has been observed during proton solar events. At the same time, among women aged 50 to 59 years, a slight but significant decrease was identified in the risk of suicide during magnetic storms and full moons. So this is so interesting to me, um, especially as somebody who uh, studies the stars, um, that... Proton solar events uh, it can be linked to suicide in women. Um, just something to keep an eye on, you know, something to be aware of. I mean, I think this just goes to show that the stuff that's going on in the sun can impact people. Okay. Um, and one thing, if I may deviate over to the astrological side of things, um, several years ago, I did a bunch of research on solar storms and birth charts, because this is the big question that I had. My question is, um, so, so we all know, you know, a star chart, well, I mean, maybe, maybe we do, um, but you know, when you're born, you have a chart that is kind of like the map of your whole life. And most people know their sun sign, which is to say, are you an Aquarius or a Virgo? Are you a Leo or a Taurus? Okay. Most people know what they are in terms of their sun sign, which is um, just where the sun was in the sky when you were born. And my big question was, if there was a sunspot active on the day you were born, does that impact how that sun energy shows up in your life? Okay. And so I did some studying up on this. And of course, it's a, uh, obviously it's kind of subjective, um, but I was spending a lot of time pulling up charts of old solar storms and correlating that with star charts like natal charts. And my, my main hypothesis was proven incorrect. I do remember because I 
but now I don't remember exactly the details, so I need to go find all my journals. I didn't expect to be doing this today. I didn't know about this solar storm until, you know, early this morning. Um, so maybe I'll go dig dig up my research if I can. Um, I just remember thinking, oh, that's not what I expected. Um, but now it's been probably seven or eight years since I really like dug into all of that. And um, and I think I have some new questions to ask and new ways of thinking about sunspots and their effects on um on natal charts i was trying to go through and find it my my biggest hypothesis was on myself and i think i had theorized that um i think i wondered no i can't remember i'm not going to butcher it i'm not going to butcher it but um i remember that i expected to see a sunspot on the sun during my birth, but it wasn't there or vice versa. I expected to not see one and there was one. I need to go look it up. But anyway, um, that is something that I wonder, are the storms that take place on the sun during our birth, do those impact us, um, you know, in years to come? Or so my, my son, my, sorry, my husband, my daughter and my husband's mother were all born on the same day, 17 degrees of Taurus earlier this week. And so I wonder if even though they didn't have a, they may or may not have had sunspots active during their birth, if that's active on their solar return, does that impact how a solar return turns out for somebody? So your solar return is your birthday. You get a whole new chart on your birthday that relates to where the sun was when you were born. Um, if the sun is having a solar event, a giant, a giant storm during your solar return, does that impact the stability of your year? So I'm very interested in researching that with all my spare time, of course, um, but that is one thing that has been on my mind <laughs> to study at some point, and I've studied it on and off in the past, but we're still gathering data. Um, anyway, all of that is to say, we have some really interesting stuff going on in the night sky. Go and see if you can see the northern lights tonight. Why not? Um, I vote to not freak out, but to be aware that we're in some really interesting times. These geomagnetic storms may also lead to actual storms in real life. And I know there's been some very terrible storms in the Midwest. And I do actually think those are linked to the solar eclipse that we had um, in April. So I'm still kind of researching and assembling data on that, which is why I haven't like been reporting it. But, but I think that we may see some more exciting actual storms like earth storms as a result of these solar storms and we'll just have to keep an eye on it anyway um that's it for today thanks for hanging out with me i hope that you have a fabulous day let me know if you go see the northern lights let me let, i want to hear about it take some pictures and share them if they can't go on youtube comments come hang out with me on facebook i'm ali duzet on facebook um, i'm trying to take off my instagram at i am ali duzet on instagram so come hang out with me on instagram share some stuff i would love to see it okay have a great day guys bye